Alright, so here's an exploded view of everything I'm using. Um, so the PVC is three quarter inch and one and a quarter inch. The three quarter inch I'm using because I just had some spare stuff laying around. And then let me show you why I'm using the one and a quarter inch at the bottom. So I'm designing this around Olympic weights. And you can see there's that's the closest fit as far as PVC goes to the inside of an Olympic weight. So there's not a lot of slop and a lot of play. And that'll be on the end of this thing. So for the three quarters inch, to make it a little stronger, I'm running some dowel, uh, dowel rod through it. So I suggest that if you're using three quarters inch. So here I've got two 17 inch dowel rod pieces and one six inch piece. And then I've got some three quarters inch pipe insulation. Um, two pieces cut there, they're each five and a quarter inches. And then I've got these four six and a half inch pieces right here. That'll be the arms on this thing. And then as far as T's go, I've got one, two, three, three quarter inch T's. And then this thing in the middle, I couldn't get back apart after dry fitting it, so I just left it together. But these two T's are connected by these uh, two inch long three quarter inch pieces right here. Then you can see on the outside, there are two, these just need to be 90s, they don't need this extra opening. Again, I just had some scrap laying around, so I use these. Um, but they're connected by a two and a half inch piece in the middle. That one and this one over here. And then to convert to our one and a quarter inch, what we're taking is taking the end of this three quarter inch and going into a bushing can see here so it goes three quarter inch to one and a quarter inch bushing and then that will fit into this one and a quarter inch coupling which will then fit into the bottom of this thing um, so what I did to get the marks for where I'm gonna put the pin in the bottom and drill the holes is I basically just measured the 10 pound plate I plan on stacking multiples of those um, so that was roughly one inch high. So I saw where this thing stopped um, once it's all the way in there and just measured one inch down so that I don't get a lot of play in this thing and can stack multiple 10 pound weights to work all the way down. So this is where you can customize it based on what kind of weights you're using and uh, what kind of increments you plan to go up if you're using yeah, you could even do big rubber bumper plates on this thing if you want to. You just have to space the holes accordingly. All right, so I've already put a couple pieces together here. Starting with this piece, so the bushing right here goes into the coupling, and then that coupling goes into our eight inch long, one and a quarter inch piece of PVC pipe. So I definitely recommend using a rubber mallet if you have one to uh, help you assemble this thing. And again, our middle piece has already been assembled, which is just two T's with these little two inch pieces in between. And the sides, these are the pieces that can just be 90. These aren't necessary, I just had the scrap. Um, but go ahead and put your legs into the sides. For both of them. And from here you can take your cushion for your foot, slide it on the top leg, do the same thing on the other side. You know, take our middle top tee, go ahead and throw this thing on. Before we close it in, we'll take our 17 inch dowel rod. And I had some, I actually cut my little too short, that's why I've got this scrap here, but it should be 17. And we're gonna 
throw that in here for some extra structural support. And then this middle piece is going to go to your top piece. This leg swing and go on like that to the middle. And before we connect the other side, we're going to do the same thing with the dowel on the bottom. Put that piece on in there. Then take our other side. So you can see that dowel is just feeding all the way through to the end just to give it some extra structural support, take some of that flex out of it. Right. And here you can see how wobbly it is. It's not totally square because not everything's fastened in. So what I'm going to do is just hit the edges to get this thing to settle in some. So take that high edge, hold the other edge down. Once you've gotten the majority of the rock out of this thing, to where it's sitting pretty square, then what I'm going to do next is go ahead and drill these holes for the placement that I've set, and then I'll connect it all together. So for this one, I'm not actually going to use um, PVC cement, but if you have that, you can. I want to make this as cheaply as possible, so I'm just going to use some screws that I have laying around uh, to finish securing this thing. So here's one of the more expensive parts of the build that I just picked up. It's a hitch pin. Just picked it up from Lowe's. It's four dollars and forty cents. This will make changing the weight super easy. So I'm going to drill the holes in this thing with a size that lines up with this. And the hitch pin has one of those little knobs right here that, when you slide it through that spring lid, it'll press in and then pop back out to lock it in. All right, so I've got my holes drilled now in the pipe. So if you wanted to get real technical, you could throw this thing on a drill press and get it totally vertical, but I just kind of winged it, uh, drilled it by hand. But you can see the pin fits nicely, goes in there. And then like I was talking about earlier, you've got the little ball on there right here that secures it. So I just use a quarter inch drill bit since this is a quarter inch hitch pin. I think that's going to hold the weights nicely. Now I use the 10 pound because that's what I based my spacing off of knowing I'd probably go up in 10 pound increments the most. So that sucker will go through there. And there you go. Oh, there you go. It's going to hold it on there. Alright, so for the last phase of this, I'm going to throw this piece of scrap dowel down in here. So I'm going to end up drilling into that so I can get a solid connection between all these points. Alright, so I'll throw some screws into this thing and that will be our tip bar. So before I put the screws in, I just wanted to show you what I was talking about with knocking it square. So you can see now it's sitting flush on the table. If I can get this thing to focus. There we go. Whereas before it was kind of wobbling. So if you just hit all four of the corners, just kind of go back and forth until this thing sits flush, then you should be good to piece it together. All right, so I may have went overboard with the screws, but I just want to make sure this thing was really stout. On this one right here, so that's where I had this dowel. There it is, there's the dowel. So that is running from this top all the way through here and so I've got one long screw that is going through not only this connection that connection 
that center pipe, but also the dowel. So this thing should be strong. Let's test it out. You can see I've got a engaged audience here. Little buddy's pretty hyped about the tip bar. Yeah, you guys don't care. All right, first test run here. Got 20 pounds on it. You see, there's the pin holding it in. This without dropping the camera. Now you can see what's going on a little bit better. All right, I've got 35 pounds on here, so I'm gonna give this a go. It holds it, and this is brutal. <laughs> If you aren't familiar with what a tib bar is or how to train your tibialis, I'll refer to this video by Ben Patrick, Needs Over Toes Guy. Ben was the first person to introduce me to tibialis training. The tibialis flexes the foot, and more specifically, it flexes into dorsiflexion. It's often an undertrained and neglected muscle that leads to not only imbalances in the ankle, but can cause imbalances in the rest of the body. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up so that other people can find it and subscribe for new videos every week.